Did you have a dream when you were growing up? A dream. Did you have something that you wanted so desperately? Or something you wanted to be just so desperately? I want to be this so bad. I'd give anything for that. Well, when I was a kid, my dream was to have cable TV. I needed it. I was desperate for it, and I was willing to give up anything to have cable TV. Now, when I was growing up, we had a little 13-inch, that's unimaginable right now, right? We had a 13-inch TV with a, with a bunny ear antenna, and we got two channels. We got the WB and Fox, on which you could only watch cartoons on Saturday mornings. <laughs> And I wanted that. I wanted the ability to control my destiny and watch cartoons anytime that I wanted. So that was my dream, was to have cable TV. My, my friend, my best friend since like infancy, I'll take your car, and you can have my cable. And me, I mean, I'm eight. I don't know anything. <laughs> I'm like, all right, I, I guess you plug it in, and this is how it works. You know, my parents really were holding out on me. This is all it took. It's just some copper. And so I traded him something that was immeasurably valuable to me, this awesome car, for this. And of course, as you all know, this is like worthless. Okay, with the price of copper, it's worth a little bit more now. But this is not valuable, okay? You can, go, you can go to Walmart and get one of these bad boys. This is just a normal coax cable. You do, to his credit, you do plug this into the back of your TV and connect it you know, to the wall, and then that gives, this, the cable TV passes through this, but this is not cable TV, <laughs> right? So I traded something so valuable for something that was so, so worthless. And I still regret it to this day because there were no take backs. <laughs> I traded, I shook on it, spit on my hand, everything. <laughs> now, we could talk about all, we could, you know, I could go all day about how, how I was deceived, you know. He knew what he was doing. He knew what he was getting into. He knew that he was trading me something bad for something good. Um, or we could talk about how, you know, my friend kind of took advantage of me. And I just want to just be, be clear. He was a really good friend. Like, he made a mistake here. He shouldn't have done this, but I'll still get back at it. I'm just kidding. Um, but he, in general, he was a, he was a really good friend. Um, but he did really kind of take advantage of me. But, you know, thinking about this story in my, in my old age, um, I don't think that was the real issue here. His deception wasn't the real issue. 
The real issue is that I had a misconception about the value of what I had versus the value of what I traded it for. I didn't get that this was worthless. And I didn't get what I really, really, really didn't get was that what I had, that car, was very valuable. It was a cool gift, and I loved it, and I treasured it immensely, and I'm sure my parents spent a lot of money on it. It was so valuable. And so today, we're, looking at, we're going to be looking at the story of Jacob and Esau. You may have heard of it. And how the real issue with this story, you know, the story of Jacob and Esau, Esau sells his birthright to his, his brother Jacob for a bowl of soup. But the real issue with this story was not the deception of Jacob, but the misconception of Esau. He didn't get it. He didn't know the value of what he had. Now, uh, turning your Bibles to Genesis 25, chapter 25, verse 27. Genesis 25, verse 27. So uh, Jacob and Esau, they were twin brothers. And they were the sons of Isaac and Rebekah, way back at the beginning of the Bible. If you're looking for Genesis, it's the first book in the Bible. So these are like some of the first humans, some of the first twins even. And well, they're, But they're, you know, looking at these two brothers, though they were brothers, they were very, very different. Genesis 25, 27. And it says, as the boys grew up, <clears throat> Esau became a skillful hunter he was an outdoorsman, but Jacob had a quiet temperament, preferring to stay at home. That sounds real familiar. Isaac loved Esau. Isaac, his father, loved Esau because he enjoyed eating the wild game Esau brought home. But Rebecca loved Jacob. And that's real quality parenting right yeah. there. <laughs> one day, so one day, when Jacob was cooking some stew, Esau arrived home from, it says the wilderness, but I looked it up, and this just means the field. And honestly, it means the cultivated field. So Esau wasn't even gone that long. Um, Esau arrived home from the wilderness, or the field, exhausted and hungry. And Esau said to Jacob, I'm starved. Give me some of that red stew. Give it to me. And looking at the Hebrew, you know, actually the English kind of cleans it up for us a little bit. You know, Jacob, give me some of that red stew. What Esau actually says is, brother, the red stuff. Give me the red stuff. Let me gulp it down. It's like the Bible is comparing them to an animal. It's just like he can't, he can't even get words out. He's just like a sputtering imbecile. And that's intentional because Jacob's not the bad guy here, believe it or not. Give me some of that red stuff, that red stuff. Jacob says, all right, but first, trade me your rights as firstborn son. Trade me your birthright. And now back in the day, just an explanation, you know, nowadays, hopefully, the way it works when a parent, a parent dies is that you split the estate evenly. And we know it doesn't always work that way, but hopefully that's the way it should work, right? Well, back in the day, what happened was the firstborn son got a double portion of the inheritance of his parents. So that means if there were two sons, they split the inheritance into three pieces. Firstborn son got two, and the secondborn son got one. So the firstborn son got twice as much. And Jacob said, all right, you're hungry, I'll sell you some soup, but you gotta give me your inheritance, your share of the inheritance. And Esau said, look, I'm dying here. I'm dying of starvation. What good is my birthright to me now? What good is it? It's worthless. He counted it as worthless. But Jacob said, first, because he's smart, first, you must swear that your birthright is mine. So Esau swore an oath, thereby selling, not, it was not stolen from him, thereby selling all his rights as the firstborn to his brother Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau some bread and lentil stew. Esau ate his meal, and then he just got up and left. He showed contempt. The reason I dance is because a song played for those of you on the live stream. <laughs> uh, he sh <laughs> Jacob gave Esau some bread and lentil stew. Esau ate the meal, and then got up and left. And listen to this part, because this is very, 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 very important. 
He showed contempt for his rights as the firstborn. Would you repeat that after me? He showed contempt for his rights as the firstborn. Ouch. He didn't care. He placed such a low value on his birthright. He said, I'm dying. But we all know he wasn't dying. Some of us who are in this fast right now know you could go a lot longer than a day without dying, without eating, right? He wasn't dying. He just wanted some soup, and he was a little dramatic. Esau showed contempt for his rights, but Jacob craved them. He craved the rights of firstborn. He wanted to be first so bad, even from birth. It says, it, says in, it says in the Bible earlier in the story that Jacob and Esau actually wrestled each other in the womb. They're fighting each other even before birth. They're both trying to get out first. And Jacob is like, nah, it's going to be me. It's going to be me. It's going to be me. And even as Esau, the older brother, is coming out, Jacob is grabbing his heel that's why he called, he's called Jacob. It means heel grabber. He grabs Esau's heel as if to say, get back in here. I'm going to be the firstborn. He wanted it so bad. He hungered after the blessing of his father, whereas his brother hungered after soup. He hungered after the blessing of his father. So do you get what I'm saying here? Jacob had the right idea. Jacob, even though, you know, he used some like crooked methods to get it, Jacob actually understood the value of the father's blessing and he was willing to do what it took to get it. Jacob placed the correct value on the blessing and so he fought for it. Esau placed the wrong value on the blessing so he just forgot about it. He just moved on. He got up and he, he ate and left. And this is why every single place in the Bible, retroactively, where Esau is mentioned, it is profoundly negative, guys. Esau is not the good guy here. Everywhere he's mentioned, he is the bad guy. I'm moving things around. Sorry, tech team. Hebrews, <laughs> Hebrews 12, 16. Make sure that no one is immoral or godless like Esau who traded his birthright as the firstborn son for a single meal, you know that afterward, when he wanted his father's blessing, he was rejected. It was too late for repentance, even though he begged with bitter tears. You see, the action of selling away something that was so valuable, the rights as the firstborn, God says that is sin. You gave away something so valuable for nothing. And so not even repentance would bring it back. And we know from the later on the story, he tries to get his blessing back from his father. His mom intervenes, and then, you know, goat skins are involved, dressing her, her smooth-skinned son in goat, goat skin so that he's hairy, and then he takes the blessing again. We'll read that later. He gets the blessing. Esau scorned what was rightfully his. He gave up something of a measurable value and traded it for something totally worthless, like my cable. And sometimes I wonder if we, as the church, have traded our birthright as the children of God, as the sons and daughters, the firstborn of the king, for soup. We've traded what was promised to us. We've traded our rights as firstborn for something worthless. We've just like got up from the table and walked away. You know, I don't even really need that. I don't really even need what God has promised me. I'm doing just fine. I had my meal. I'm ready to go. We are the firstborn of the king. We're the firstborn of the Lord. I know what you're saying. Jesus is the firstborn. Okay, well, Hebrews 12, 23. Right after it talks about Esau being immoral and godless, giving away his birthright as firstborn, it says, verse 23, you have come to the assembly, the church. You have come to the assembly of God's firstborn 
children, plural. You have come to the assembly of God's firstborn children whose names are written in heaven. If you are a child of God, you are the firstborn. You have the double portion. You have the double portion. You have an incredible, immeasurably valuable inheritance through him and from him. He has given it to you. He is standing from an open heaven saying, take it. It's yours. Do not show contempt for your rights as firstborn like Esau did. Don't forget about it. Don't give it away. Please do not give it away. But rather hunger and thirst after it like Jacob did. Be like Jacob. Chase after the blessings and the promises of the Lord, for they are your inheritance. They are what has been promised to you. They're yours for the taking. And what are they? What has God promised you? What is your inheritance? When you, when you signed your name, when you said the words, Lord, I want to turn from my sins. I want, to turn, I want to turn to you, make you my savior, and I want to follow you all the days of my life. I want to be a Christian. What was your inheritance? You were given a deep, access to a deep personal relationship with God. You can call him friend. You can call him mentor. That is your inheritance. You've, you've opened up the avenue to holiness. You can actually be free of sin. Whereas before, when we were living, when we were living in sin, before we were Christians, we were, the Bible says we were powerless all we could do was keep on sinning. But because we are children of the king, our inheritance is that we can say no. I'm not going to live that way anymore. I'm going to pursue holiness. I'm going to shape my life after that of my maker. That is your inheritance. We were given the Holy Spirit when you, are, when you become a Christian, the Holy Spirit comes and dwells in you to be your guide, your mentor. It's like conscience, 2.0. And then more than that, and this is really, when I, you know, as I was praying about this sermon, I feel like this point is, is, this is the point where most of us, so many of us just don't get it. This is our inheritance that we've given away. It's the baptism in the Holy Spirit. When you became a Christian, you received the Holy Spirit. But there is a second blessing that comes later. And in my experience, it comes through submitting to God. God, I am yours. I want everything that you have. Give it to me. I want your gifts of the Spirit to empower me for use for the kingdom. Baptize me in your Holy Spirit. Amen. And so many of us have said, nah. I'm good with just having the Holy Spirit. I don't need to be baptized in it. That's so sad. Because it is something of just deep, immeasurable value, and it's your inheritance. It's not like you have to fight for the rights to gain it. It was already promised to you. It's called the promise of the Father for a reason, guys. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is yours for the taking. The gifts of the Spirit are in our inheritance. And finally, you have a place. Because you are one of God's children, you have a place in his kingdom, a place of honor. You have a calling. You have a ministry, a place where you can serve God faithfully. He has set that aside for you. That is your inheritance. These are the things that have been promised to you as children of the Most High. How many of you have given up on them? Have forgotten about these valuable gifts? You've given up on holiness. You know, I just can't get over this sin. I'm just a sinner. No, you're not. You're a child of the king. That's not your inheritance. I, 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 I've just given up on the baptism of the Holy Spirit because I haven't had the initial evidence of speaking in tongues. That's your inheritance. Seek after it. I'm going to talk more about that. You've given up on your calling. 
because you thought, well, you know, I got to make ends meet. I can't, you know, I, th- that means I can't serve on Sundays for some reason. You've given up your place in God's kingdom. No, you, that's your inheritance. Why are you giving it away? Why have you left it at the table? So many of us have given up on the blessings of God because they didn't come easy. But guys, the blessings of God do not come easy. They do not always come easy. Sometimes you have to fight for them. Sometimes you have to fight for them. And I remember when I was 15 years old, I had an encounter with the Lord. I was at youth group, praise God for youth groups, and we were, we were worshiping, and I just had like a moment. We are in the middle of singing that song, Healer, you know that one? Um, in the middle of singing that song, Healer, and I just had like a recognition moment. God is so much bigger than me. I am so small. He is so great, so powerful. I am nothing. I need everything that you have. And I just spoke to him. I said, God, I want everything. I want everything you have. Give it to me. I will be your servant. I submit to you. I remember saying that as a 15-year-old. I bend my knee to you, and I submit to you. And I say, do with my life whatever you want. And in that moment, I was just struck. The heat, just this fire, this heat of the Lord filled my entire body to overflow. And I wept for hours uncontrollably. I couldn't stop. It was just like I was pouring out. I was pouring out. And so I was excited about this moment. I was excited about this experience because we all, what do you think that was? The baptism in the Holy Spirit. That's what I thought it was. But then I talked to my pastors and I talked to my friends about it and they asked the, the, the death blow question. Did you receive the initial evidence of speaking in tongues? The initial evidence, because that's the biblical paradigm we see. When people were baptized in the Holy Spirit, they spoke in other languages and that didn't happen to me. And so I was so confused. Because on one hand, I thought, this was it. This has to be the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But on the other hand, I had doubts because that's the biblical paradigm. You speak in tongues. You speak in other languages. And so what did I do? Well, I rewrote theology, (laughs) and I decided that, well, you don't need to speak in tongues to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. No, of course not. That's not what I did. I sought after God. I got on my hands and knees for weeks, guys, weeks. I would not give up. I was relentless until finally that led me to the place of of my high school library. And I sat in the corner on a chair at the end of one of the book stacks, and I said, God, I don't want to doubt that I have the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I want the evidence of the gift in tongues, and I am not getting up until you give it to me. Just like that, guys. The words just came to my mind, and I opened my mouth, and I started talking. And the Spirit gave me utterance. That gift of tongues didn't come easy. But guys, I'm so glad I have it. It is my, my worship. It is my communion with the Lord. When I'm, when I'm in, one of the greatest ways it's impact me, impacted me is when I'm worshiping, the Lord, the Lord has allowed me to sing in the Spirit, to actually sing using my, my prayer language. And the, guys, it's one of the most impactful, amazing experiences to sing in a heavenly language to my maker. And I wouldn't have gotten it if I gave it up. In some ways, I wonder if the Lord is just testing us. How bad do you want it? Are you willing to just leave it at the table? Or are you going to fight for it? So many of us have left it at the table. But you can't. It is your inheritance. And you have to fight for it. Fight for it like Jacob did. Remember, <laughs> later in the story, Jacob, he wrestles with God. 
He fights him. He gets into an actual fight with the God of the universe. And what does he say? I am not letting you go until you bless me. You cannot leave until you give me what I want. And we look at that and we're like, wow, the gall of that guy. How dare he? How dare he approach the God of the universe like that with such open honesty? But guys, guess what? The Lord blessed him. The Lord blessed him. And I think the Lord looked at that and said, all right, finally, someone who gets it Someone who actually understands that I have something that's valuable, my blessing, and they are willing to fight the God of the universe who tapped his leg and pulled it from the socket. He's willing to keep fighting me to get my blessing. He recognizes the value of what I have, and he's not willing to let me go and leave it at the table. God blessed him. And he changed his name in that moment. He said, you will no longer be called Jacob, which means deceiver. I'm sorry if you named your kid Jacob. There's good meanings too. But at its root, it means deceiver. And he changed his name to Israel, which means he who fights with God. And that was the name of their nation. The ones who fight, who wrestle, who contend with the God of the universe. And, you know, we look at that and we're kind of like, I don't know if that's such a good thing. (laughs) They're fighting with God. They're wrestling with God. Well, what's the deal with that? But here's the deal. Jacob did not fight God out of anger. He fought God out of hunger. He said, I want what you've got, and I'm not letting you go until you give it to me. I'm not letting you go until you give it to me. Now, I'll be totally honest with you guys, just going to level with you. We look at the story of these great people in the Bible, and we wonder, okay, he was great. How does that apply to me? And I understand that. There's actually a big difference between the great patriarch of Israel, Jacob, And all of us, big difference. You know what that is? Jacob hungered and fought for a blessing that was not yet his. But we hunger and fight for a blessing that's already been promised. It's already been given to us, which means we don't even have to fight as hard. We don't have to fight as hard. God has already said, come on, take it, flood the altar, ask me for my gifts, ask me for my baptism of the Holy Spirit, ask me for holiness, ask me for calling, ask me for the gift of tongues, for healings, for miracles, just ask me, I'm waiting. And my question to you guys is, are you willing to just let it, leave it on the table again? No, don't do it. And so now, I'm going to invite you to come to this altar. And in just a minute, don't don't get up just yet. I'm going to invite you to come down to the altar and chase after what God has promised you. Chase after the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I feel like that's the big one God's going to do today with the evidence of tongues. Chase after holiness. I want to leave my sin behind. Chase after healing. Chase after him. But before we do that, before I call you up to the altar, there's one more invitation I'd like to give. And that is, in order to receive, to be a benefactor of the inheritance of the Father, you need to be one of his children, right? You need to come to a place where you say, I want to follow you, Jesus. I want to be a Christian. And I'm going to give you the opportunity to, ha- to come there today. All right, so with every, why don't you all stand? Why don't you all stand? With, with every eye closed, every head bowed, if you want to become a Christian, if you want to place your faith in Jesus today, every eye closed, repeat after me and everyone else. We all love saying the prayer so we can say it too. 
Say, Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I turn from my sins. I don't want to live that way anymore. I turn to you. And I ask you to be my savior, to be my master. And Lord, I will follow you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now, with every, every head bowed, every eye closed, is there someone who prayed that prayer today in the room or online that you prayed that for the first time? You say, this is my come to Jesus moment. If you're online, you can raise it to it too. All right. Well, it looks like every single one of you in this room is already a child of God. So that means you can partake in his blessings. So now, why don't you all come up and we're gonna play a song all about hungering and thirsting for the Lord. And I want you to do that. Don't leave it on the table. Pursue him. And if you're one of those people who you're not sure if you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit because you didn't get the gift of tongues, now is the time. And I encourage you, come on up. Come on up. Sweep me away Sweep me away with you Sweep me away Sweep me away with you Sweep me away Sweep me away with you. If you're praying that this morning and you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit, I just invite you to just set your focus on Him and ask. The Bible says, ask and you'll receive. He wants to give more of His presence to you. And if you've already received, if you're back in the seats, come on, will you just create an atmosphere of worship? By pursuing God, our prayer together is that no matter what you're asking for, no matter what you're seeking, our hope and our prayer is more of God, right? Come on, sing, sweep me away. Sweep me away. Sweep me away with you. Sweep me away. There's a hunger and a thirst. I am desperate. Immerse me, and I'm not waiting, not anymore. Cause I need you, Lord. 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 I need you. There's a hunger and a thirst. I am desperate. Immerse me. And I'm not waiting. Not anymore. Because I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. I need you. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. I need you. And I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. I need you. 
Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Lord, we welcome you in this place. Make your home here. Dwell in us, Jesus. And fill those with your spirit. Baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Baptize them with your Holy Spirit and give them the gift of tongues, Jesus. And if they are seeking something else, some blessing that you have promised, Jesus, Lord, give it to them. Honor their fight. Honor their desire to seek after, after you, to seek after what you have, because we know it is valuable. We honor you today, and we bless you in Jesus' name. We say all glory, all honor, all power belongs to you. We just want to experience it in Jesus' name. We want to experience you to your fullness, to your power, and we come here ex- Expectant in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, come down. Holy Spirit, come down in fire and in water and baptize your people in Jesus' name. Fill them. Flood. Speak now in your spirit language. Speak now. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid, but speak now like you've never spoken before. And don't be afraid of what the world is thinking. Don't be afraid of what I'm thinking, what your spouse is thinking, but only think about the Lord and what he has promised you. What he has said is yours. Fill us, Lord. Fill us to overflow and shower your blessings, shower your inheritance upon your people. May these people dream dreams and prophesy and sing new songs to your name. May miracles be poured out upon them, Lord. May healing breath blow from our lungs in Jesus' name. May these, be, may these men and women be your hands and your feet as we carry your gospel to the end of the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Lord, we love you. Oh, Jesus. As you go out into the week, and, you, if you, and if you received the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, let one of us know, please. We want to know. And if you didn't and you still want it, this is not the end. Don't leave it on the table. Keep pursuing. Guys, it took me weeks. It took me weeks. But I was fervent. I wanted it bad. Keep seeking. Keep seeking the Lord as you go out into the week. Amen? I love you guys. So now we're going to dismiss. Um, if, if, you are, if you want to go to membership class, I think it's happening right here. It's hap- stay in here. If you weren't sure you were going to come, just stay. It's fine. We'll figure it out. Um, everyone else, it was so good to see you this week. I, I so look forward to seeing you next week. May God bless you. And may God just honor your seeking and fighting after what he has promised you. See you next week. God bless. There's a hunger and a thirst.